Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn, and I'm joined by Ramez Hari Krishna Sami. Ramez, how are you doing? Hi, Flynn. I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Exciting to hang out with you and what you have in store for us. Very excited. Um, we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we're streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, and say hello to all of you in chat as well. So uh, I can see some friendly faces in chat. We've got Steve. Great to see you again. Johanna looking after us. Uh, Mode of the Void is here as well. It's great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you're watching on YouTube um, and you feel like saying hello, you can jump over to behance.net slash live to do that. I know there's a bunch of people probably over in YouTube, so we'll keep an eye there as well um, if you haven't moved over today. Um, let's play some music and um, make sure that everybody knows Ramez as well as I do <laughs> because I'm such a huge fan of your work. Um, but it's been way too long since we've had you on Adobe Live. So um, a, a lot of what you do here for us is photo manipulation, digital artwork. So can you tell us a bit more like about what you do every day, day in the life? Sure. Uh, so uh, again, I'm a digital artist. Um, I'm working as a, a senior art director uh, in a company called Mind Valley. Um, beside creating design assets for the company at night, what happened is that again, uh, while working uh, in the daytime, I'll get ideas and I'll store them in my mind, uh, knowing that I can't work on it on during working hours. And as soon as I'm done, uh, like six or seven o'clock uh, at night, uh, I have my dinner and the whole family will go back to sleep. And that's when a new Rames will born. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll start creating all the stuff that I have in my And Yeah, that's the reason why uh, if you um, any of you know about my Instagram stuff, uh, you probably see like the tons of photo manipulation I create is because again those ideas keep flowing and I I I need to get it done. Else I'll I'll be like like a psycho and like not knowing what to do. <laughs> like for example, I'll, I'll feel blur and all that. So yeah, that's the reason why I keep creating all these uh, images is because it's it's in my head and I just need to release it and show it to the followers. You gotta get friends. you gotta get it out. You can't sleep yeah, until yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I so, <have> that. <laughs> so would you say you're a night owl then? Yes, yes. Talking about owl, I like how you give, like, sort of like a trailer to it. Yeah. So, so yeah, I can't wait to show what we have for today. Okay, well, let's get let's get stuck into it. All right, let's go. Okay, great. Um, and the owl pun will make a little bit more sense. It wasn't that that prepared. I promise. It was a little bit off the cuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're sharing we're sharing your desktop now, and yeah, we're checking out some owls. So, what is going on here? Okay. Um, I think, as you all know, uh, most of my uh, manipulation consists of human beings as the subject and also animals. I, 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 love, I love having a pair of both. Um, but for this session, um, since we have two hours, hour today and one hour Thursday, I think it would be nice to explore uh, a subject, an animal subject. Uh, so I was thinking to create a character from the movie uh, Legends of the Guardians. I'm not sure if you guys watched it before. It was out like 10 years ago. Um, again, directed by Zack Snyder. Um, I think it would be nice to just recreate the owl uh, because you can see how majestic it is. Again, I want to zoom in and show you guys, right? Like, for example, you can see like the detail, right? You can see, I mean, his movies are always amazing. Uh, it's dark, you know, you don't feel like animation. It's literally a movie, a freaking movie. So they all look real. Um, I think it would be nice to recreate one of them uh, for this session. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so excited about this. Um, <laughs> when you're chatting about it, looking up, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a Zack Schneider film. I haven't seen it. I'm a big Watchmen fan and obviously he's done like a lot of, you know, but we're talking about like the color and the animations mm -hmm. are always are always so, um, so amazing. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Do we have some owl fans in the chat as well? I'm, I'm, I, one of my favorite animals are ducks. Everyone, like a lot of people right. know that, um, but okay. you're a big fan of owls. So this is really yes. cool. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. So where do you, where do you start with something like this? So these, so these are reference images from the movie. Yeah. yeah these are scenes start? from the movie. So, um, right. I think it will be nice to, um, create like for example these are existing scenes right like you know me i like to create photo manipulation with story with it um i think i want to create a story where again just imagine owl um is rescuing a scroll um so this scroll contains a very important message that uh, the bad people have uh, took it from the king so he managed to grab it and he's going to pass back to the king so 
So imagine an owl carrying a scroll and then flying through a, a windy day, like during sunset. So try to imagine that. I'm sure okay. you all, with the explanation, probably you have a visual already in your mind. But now I'm going to recreate it, like literally in Photoshop, so that again I can visual, I can show you what I have in mind. So yeah, fantastic. All right. And so the bad, okay. the bad, the bad guys are also owls. Like it's they're all yes, owls. Yeah. yeah okay. So usually what happens is that in movies, usually they are the same species, just that um, of course they look uh like a bad guys you know they're dark you know they have like stitches all over yeah. but the 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 good people are looking good like they always like you know they're clean and all that so <laughs> i'm gonna bring that up back here and see what i yeah the bad guys have, have like guess, eyebrows yeah. like pointing yeah like, yeah 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 eyebrows yeah are a little bit angrier <laughs> and so we have angry. one here example <laughs> yeah there he is all right yeah okay. so I think um, to focus on a few things, um, like I said in my previous streams before this, it was last year, I think, um, always um, give importance to the storytelling of your photo manipulation. Don't just create something because you think it will look nice, but if you add stories to it, it will look more extraordinary. Um, in this, uh, I will focus on a lot on the uh, background. Uh, how do you change the lighting? How do you add shadows? Um, again, how do you add element like for example in this session i will literally recreate the viking helmets like for example i will use okay. some elements from stock images but i will show you how i create it from scratch so yeah Amazing. awesome yeah so should we get started let's do it let's get started okay. and also as we're going along mm -hmm. if you're new to adobe live um, you can ask questions as you're going along that's related you know, if you want to ask Ramez a question or if you have something related to a, like a tool or something, something is done and you want to, you want to, you know, clarification on it or why you might use that, feel free to ask your questions in chat. Awesome. So I've opened up a new canvas. Like for example, I'm using 16 by nine because you know how movie is, right? Um, I don't use square. Uh, square is something that I'll create for my Instagram content um, because it's, it, you can view more. Uh, in yep. square but for this uh session I, I think it would be nice to use a wider version so this is our canvas um and as you can see when i create new one it's just um uh you can see it's just a 720p uh again because it's uh, again i'm using a 4k monitor but then uh for resolution purposes i think it'd be just nice to use a 720p uh, and it's just 72 uh, dpi so nothing major but then when i zoom in you can still see how sharp it is right mm. So we're going to start off with um, adding the background. So I'm going to just drag in an image of the sky. There you go. So I have a stock image here, uh, image of the sky. I'm going to just blow it up really big like this, uh, maybe larger. I'm going to just place it somewhere here like this. Just open up my layers so that you guys can see how it's done. So again, um, I like to adjust the color in the first phase itself. Some of the artists like to wait until the end. Um, again, I, when I adjust the color way earlier, um, so I, by that steps, I can actually see how it looks like at the end, right? So I don't have to wait until the end to adjust right. the colors. So this is, um, so let me just add in one more image, which is the main character, the owl. I really, really love the the positioning. I think it would be nice to just blow it up this big. Again, as I mentioned earlier, he's carrying a scroll. So it would be nice to just increase it like this. Again, I'm uh, making it larger. Uh, if you want to see the, the background as well, you just lower down the opacity. Yeah. And then you can actually see it, right? Uh, I think it would be nice to have it like that. Okay. Uh, now, um, I'm going to adjust the color right after I crop the bird out from the background. So in order to do that, like always press on W, quick selection shortcut, select subject right on top there, and everything will get selected. It's perfect again because it's against a white background it's easily selected so you can see all the detailing is okay you can see some part not that uh it's not selected but it's okay we can do a manual selection later again i'm going to quickly mask it there you go and let's do a cleanup before we adjust the color again just make sure that you're clicking on the masking again and go to select and mask now what you're doing is we're going to zoom in and clear up the white spots in here there you go cool. and it would be nice to just clean up the edges as well. It's okay if it's not so smooth because we're going to adjust the lighting later. So it'll fix everything. 
So do you have a bit so of a feather, a feather on there as well? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what happened is that when you zoom in, you can actually see the detail start to pop up because you're actually clearing up the white spot and the uh, white background. Mm. So you bring out the detail of the fur. So I'm going to just go around the edge and cleaning it up like this. And do you use a keyboard and mouse? So you can see if, when I zoom in, yeah, I'm using a trackpad on my laptop. Trackpad, so yeah. <laughs> I don't use any whack. Yeah, trackpad, yeah. Uh, a lot of people do email and ask me, like, message, ask, do I use like a, a special mouse? I said no, <laughs> but I used to. The problem is that when I travel, again, I like to create something on the go. It's a hassle to bring a, a mouse. Right. And then you join the USB keyboard and then work on it. So I, I trained myself to use a uh, trackpad instead, uh, which is, again, save space on my bag. I don't have to carry extra stuff. Mm. And then click OK. Voila, you're done. Uh, now it's the best part. I really, really love sharing this. Again, color look up my, my yes. most amazing tips ever. A lot of people <laughs> love this. So I'm going to go to color look up. Uh, it's right at the bottom under color adjustment. Click on color look up. When you click on that, you'll get a preset of like colors. Again, my favorite is tree, uh, edgy amber, fall uh, colors, and future blick. Okay, now see what happens after I click on future blick. Boom. Cool. The color is just amazing before and after. Again, I don't have to uh, manually select the subject and go to color adjustment and adjust one by one. Mm. By clicking on this, I literally adjusted everything else. Um, again, another thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to place on color lookup here and I'm going to create another one, which is uh, by just pressing Ctrl J. I want to create one uh, at the bottom on the sky and I'm going to add another color lookup. And I'm gonna this time click on edgy ember. So edgy ember is slightly orangey. Like I said earlier, uh, if you remember what I said, imagine it seeing this scene during sunset. So I'm trying to right. bring back that mood. Right. And now a combo of two colors will look better. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity. You can see a mixture of both. Cool. So both those color lookups are both working together. At ev and, and does it yeah. affect everything below? Is that how it works? It yeah. affects all layers below it? Right. So okay. see what happened here, right? Um, there's two colors on top here. Again, as you can see, I never mask anything. Like everything, it's, 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 it's right on top of it, on each other. If I were to do a masking uh, like this, I just press alternate. You can see the color only affect the uh, owl. So I don't want that. I want to bring back the, the whole color mode. And also, um, I want the background to be darker slightly. Um, so that there's some sort of like a separation of the background and foreground. So I'm going to duplicate the sky by pressing Ctrl J. When I do that, again, like I said, darker, there are many ways to do this. You can use levels, you can do uh, use uh, brightness and contrast, but I'm going to just duplicate the sky and then I'm going to go to multiply. Now, do you see the difference? Cool. Like for example, yeah. So I'm going to uh, maintain that and reduce a bit the opacity, just like this. Everything looks good. And now is the fun part where you adjust the colors so that, as you can see, the lighting is super important in photo manipulation so that, you know, people should question it whether it's real or photo manipulation. In order to achieve that, mm. that's why I always, always say that, always make sure that you adjust the colors um, uh, so that it looks real. My, my target is always that. I want to make sure that when I create something, people will question it. So that's the only way for you to get better. Mm. Uh, and we're going to do that adjustment now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to press on brightness and contrast and I'm going to mask it because again, I'm going to just adjust the uh, owl for now. I'm going to leave the background because we can always do a final touch later on. And this is the owl and I'm going to make sure that it looks darker like this. So when I slide, you can see it. It doesn't, like the brightness is amazing in Photoshop because it's, it's not da just darkening it, but it's also maintaining the texture of the owl's fur, if you notice. Like for example, it's, mm. it's right? Like this is super amazing. So I'm going to just make this darker slightly, just like this. Okay. Right. Uh, and then you can see, you still have some lighting on top, which is perfect. I can use that as a guidance uh, to create some sort of like a lighting at the back. Yeah. And I'm going to just maintain this. I'm going to make it slightly more darker. Again, 
I need to create the lighting at times if the lighting of the subject is not helping me out. So I was imagining the sunlight is right on at the back and some at the top. Again, at times you can see when you drive on the road, clear sky, you can see there are holes uh, like a space uh, on the road because mm. the sun ray is going through the clouds. So I'm going to create that scene now. So I'm going to just click on the brightness and contrast going here. Let me just hide my layers slightly here. And I'm going to just mask the part that I want the darkness to be. Like for example, this light over here, I'm going to maintain and I'm going to bring it back. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in the light just like that. Right on top. Again, um, always make sure that your flow is lowered. Opacity, you can maintain at 100%. So you don't have to worry so much about that. Flow is like the intensity of the brush. Mm -hmm. And smoothing, you can just leave it at 10%. Unless you're drawing a very smooth curves, then you probably want to increase the smoothing. So I'm going to just go in here and create the lighting. There you go. And so you're thinking about where the, the light is coming from, from the, the clouds, right? Like it's coming yes. from that particular yeah. direction and you're trying yes. to kind of, yeah. Okay. So I'm cool. trying to recreate the lighting uh, based on what I have. Mm. For example, some a lot of people wonder, hey Ramesh, okay, what if this, what if my subject is flat? Like you don't really have lights. Um, Again, you need to create the lighting. Um, I like to, when I start creating photo manipulation, I remember um, creating like this, for example, I'll just switch the color like this. And I like to create like, for example, like a sun, sunlight right. like that. And I'll make sure that it's like this. Oh, there you go. The light is here. So that constantly when I create something, my eyes, oh, one of my eyes will go to the sunlight saying that this is the direction of light. Don't mess it up. So yeah, once you're done, you can always hide it. So yeah, um, like for example, now that I'm used to all this lighting, it's at the back of my mind that the sun is there and I'm going to work towards it. So yeah. Cool. Cool. I, I, and... Just checking in the chat, I've actually got a couple of questions around light. I might try to ask one or two if that's all sure. right. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On. Go ahead. Um, so um, Moat is asking, um, do you ever create your own LUTs or do you use the ones shipped with Photoshop? Okay. Good question. You can create your own uh, LUTs, just that uh, because the built-in, the one that comes together with Photoshop is super good already. Um, again, even if I want to create uh, on top of that, I can. So I just do a simple color balancing and I'll get whatever I want. So most of the time I don't create uh, because I like to focus on my photo manipulation more on the storytelling and the, and the placement of subject. Colors is important, like I said, but whatever that's in Photoshop is already super good. Like right. I don't have to create any new ones and unless I think none of this works, then probably I'll create new ones. So yeah, but it's always a good practice to create a new one if you don't think uh, any of this works. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's great. I'll ask you one more. Um, sure. With the, with the trackpad, any tips, uh, any tips for exercises to keep your hand in tip top shape? <laughs> I don't know. Um, draw a lot. Uh, try to open up a canvas like a blank canvas, right? Just switch your brush to something small, like a, like maybe 10 pixel. Changing the smoothing will help. Like for example, um, back of your mind, probably you want to doodle something, right? So uh, if you want to draw a bird or snake, you know how it is, right? The shape, just try to recreate that. Or what you can do is you can uh, always do like this. Uh, I can create a new layer on top like this. I can change my ink to black. You can see, right? Like smoothing here. Right, so this is rough. Like for example, it's not so smooth. So if I change my smoothing to something like forty-two, see what happens. You'll be smoother. Yeah. Right? In that way, you you know how to control your mouse. So it's something that it's. So all this can only be achieved by that one mantra that I like to share with my followers and friends, which is practice, practice, and practice. Nice. <laughs> this is the only way for you to get better at anything you do in life. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Keep the questions coming in, guys. We'll collect a few and then and we'll ask a little bit um, yeah. as, we, as we're going through. Great questions so far. Yeah, good questions. So again, um, I, last year, I remember we create like um, photo manipulation where it was like in Japan, there's like a big statue of a lion. Not sure if you remember this. And there's like a, like a monk and there's a peacock, right? I if remember, you remember yeah. how the lighting was for the umbrella, I did remember explaining that because the umbrella is kind of like transparent, it takes up the light. 
So it's super important for you to know what are you working on. For example, this is an owl. Owl's fur is very thin at the edge, uh, unless it's in the middle, right? So you should have the light light up at the edge of the fur as well. So again, you have to watch a lot of like, um, uh, like I said, national geographics or something, you know, for you to understand how lighting works for animal, mm. uh, depending on their body and all that. So again, um, I love animal. Like for example, my my parents have like, a, a, I think five stray dogs at home that we, right. we, 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 we just grabbed them because they were at the roadside. So again, my parents like a hero. For me so again that's the reason why i love animals so much mm. uh, so yeah so i'm oh. trying to achieve that lighting now everything looks good again i can show you before and after so you guys know what am i doing all this while so i'm gonna go to the masking there and i'm gonna right click and disable the layer just focus on the owl can you see that yeah it's flat so but once i on it you can see the lighting start to mm. come up um again i don't know uh, whether th these guys can see the, the the detail of the owl, sometimes what happens is that it, through the live chat you probably won't see the detailing so much. I'm gonna brighten up the skin the screen slightly so that okay, I think that should work. There you go. You can see like the mood is there, the lighting is cool. Mm. Again, next step is to add the darker part, the darker shadow on top of the owl because again lighting from the back, right? So what I'm gonna do is right on top of this owl, I'm gonna create a new layer. Let's call this shadow. And I'm gonna choose a black color. Uh, again, this is my setup of colors, something that is never changeable, like it's always there. I'll make sure my tool presets are always there uh, for quick um, selection rather than, you know how Photoshop is because we have so many tools within one toolbar. Mm. So I usually drag it up and make a tool preset because it's easy to go in and change things. Um, change my brush to black, and, and that's change. and that's something because that was really interesting because you were talking about well, the, there was a question from Moat before about the LUTs, um, and you sort of mentioned you spend a lot more time you know with with this sort of stuff, but it is interesting that you have this you know palette. You've got these gradients there over to the side. Um, my mm -hmm. camera is obscuring the color lookup thing down there, but you can see that now. Um, and you have those tools that you so those are the tools that you commonly use. You commonly need. Yes. And they're right there every time. Yes, um, which is which is really cool. So that you've just found over time that speeds up your process, make things a bit more efficient? Way better. Like for <laughs> example, if I would imagine creating this, right, without tool preset, if I'm creating like maybe to adjust the lighting, it was the I'll take 10 minutes uh, with, let's say with the tool preset, probably need 20 minutes, like 10 times more. Yeah. Like for example, I literally love the way again back then i don't know i would like to go in and select one by one and then going in back and then select another tool i was like god this is so tiring there should be a way uh, to fix this so i went mm. to adobe sites and also some youtube channels where literally this artist will create tool preset for them again as i think most of the artists that draw digital painting they use this because the brush sizes are different right depending where they are mm. like for example like the eyeball if they want to color it they have to use a smaller brush so they literally will go to tool percent and then create it so i was like wait a second i can use the same step but then have my different tools in it so yeah, yeah. it works perfectly that's great i just made a so, note to myself yeah. to, to create my own tool presets because i'm often digging awesome. in the <laughs> often digging in the <laughs> menu thinking like where, where's this right. thing that i use all the time and have to have to play around. I think I should invest and in, uh, spend <laughs> some time creating tool presets myself. Yeah, it's usually like less than 10 minutes. You already kind of already know upfront what you're going to create uh, or the tools that you always use. Like for example, I have my so, so, uh, soft tool brush here. I also have rain. Uh, rain is something that I like to add as a texture. So I want to make sure that I have that one there. And in order to get the tool preset very easy, you go to windows and you can see under down here, tool preset. Nice. Right, so and a, a blank window will pop up because you're gonna create for the first time, and then you can start adding things. Great. Okay, so now we're gonna add the shadow right uh, at the wing area. Uh, again, I already created already the layer right on top here called shadow. I'm gonna change the normal blending mode to soft light. Okay. Once I create soft light, uh, what happened is that now I'm gonna go in here and. I'm going to darken this area, right? Which makes more sense because the light is flashing from the top. So I need to make sure that these areas are darkened. Again, when you start adding more and more effects like this, like darkening area and stuff like that, your subject will be 
rather than looking flat, it looks like a 3D. Yeah. Uh, something that you can achieve just using Photoshop. Again, not talking about any other 3D software. You can create that using uh, Photoshop itself. And I'm gonna just zoom in here. Like for example, I know this area is should be darker at the back of this lake. I'm gonna go again here. Um, there are also questions like, for example, how do uh, we stop going to the part that shouldn't be darkened? Uh, like for example, like here, right? Uh, I want to darken up the back of the tail, but without touching the lake. There are many ways to do this. Um, I usually have my safe area. What I do is I press on L, polygonal lasso. It's also one of my favorite. Uh, usually I'll just select the part that I want. Like for example, like this, I know that I will only want to darken up the tail. So I will create a manual selection here and then go in here and then I darken it up mm. without affecting the lake. And then control D to deselect and voila, you're done. Nice. Right? I'm going to add more. And it's also depending on how you control your uh, size of your brushes. Like for example, if I know uh, I, I want to skip the, uh, the, the the step of adding the polygonal lasso, I quickly go in here and I reduce my brush size so that I don't affect the, the leg. So yeah. I'm gonna add more darken area here, nearby the stomach, and then I'm gonna jump here. And then gonna I like to zoom in and zoom out. There are many ways to do this. Like for example, there are artists that I see uh, they, they, they are okay if they are zoomed in and adding in details. There are artists who actually goes to window and they will click on if I'm not mistaken, there's a navigator. Yeah. Can you see this navigator over yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah. So this is super useful if you uh you always want to see it how it looks like uh in a zoom out uh version, right? For example, even if I zoom in, you can see, I can see if I add in details here. Let me just show you an example. I'm going to go in here and I darken it. You can see how it looks like that, like a live ones. So that I know I don't have to waste time zooming it out and zoom in to see the details. So it's super useful. Nice. Uh, something that I rarely use, but it helps. Yeah. Okay. Darken this area. Okay, everything. Coming up good. I think the longest part um, that took, will, will probably will take me to do is the helmet, which mm. will be the second session. That's why you guys have to wait for the second session. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really <laughs> ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you you guys will probably be like, oh my god, I wonder how you're gonna create the helmet. That is the hardest part. So I'm gonna leave that for the second session, so yeah. that you guys will follow the whole session. A good hook to uh, make sure you guys tune in <laughs> yes. to Thursday session as well. <laughs> so I, I don't want to rush this. I mean, I can do this in two hours. Uh, I mean, one hour if I want to, but I, I enjoy explaining because I want you guys to learn something new. Uh, yeah, I hope, absolutely. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are learning something new. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. absolutely. No, that's great. I, I was always very blown away. I remember when we were doing some other streams, um, I think it was last year. And you mm -hmm. sort of mentioned that, you know, I think there was a question, how long does it normally take you to do this? And it was about, I think, 40 minutes or something. Like if you, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, pretty blown away, I think, um, that you could, yeah, turn things around uh, just that quickly. Like it's really amazing. I think most of us have, uh, most of us can do this. I think the only thing is uh, limitation of imagination. Mm. I think we all have. That is just a matter of practicing it. Like for example, um, before I create this, right, by just looking at all the stock images, which I was just going to show you guys what we have. Like for example, these are the stock images that I have, right? So we we already have the Viking King helmet, but trust me, it won't look the same <laughs> because <laughs> I, I will just grab uh, the small detailing part of the helmet for the texture. And you can see we already used the sky, we already used the owl. Uh, we still have the ankle and scroll that we're going to use for, I think I can get it done today. So by just looking at this, I already know the outcome. Right. So it's at the back of my head. So here I'm working towards it. Like for example, the photo manipulation screen you're looking at is I'm working towards it because it's easier rather than just sitting there and think, hmm, what I'm going to do now. Mm. The imagination helps to push you towards uh, creating the assets that you always wanted to create. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. I can a bit more. 
So let's see before and after how it looks like before and after uh, adding in shadows, right? So I'm going to hide the shadows now. Can you see it looks flat? And if I hide the brightness, it's even flat. Mm. So again, it increases the detailing part of the, the, the subject that we have. That's why I always said um, super, super important uh, five tips. Uh, I, if, hopefully I can remember. Storytelling, super important. Lights yeah. and shadows. Uh, color adjustments, final retouch. And one more I've forgotten, I think it's make sure that you uh, export in a very high quality for you to share with your friends. Because there was also a question back then, like what resolution am I creating? Of course, you should know way up front, like for example, are you creating this for a billboard or it's just for a share on your social media? You don't have to make it so huge. Uh, unless you know that after you post that on your social media, you want to uh, sell it somewhere like a, like a shop website, shopping websites. Like for example, you want people to download the digital artwork or whatever not. So yeah, then you want to create a higher DPI. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, knowing where you're going to be posting or what you're going to be doing with it Correct. is really important at the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now that I created the shadow, now it's time to add on more lights on the owl. We Right now, we are using the original colors coming from the owl. Like for example, if I hide the brightness and whatever you see up here is the original image because we already masked the uh, darkened area, some of the part using the brightness and uh, contrast. So I'm going to create more lights here. Uh, I like to use soft light as well. Uh, again, if you're not that familiar with this, this are <laughs> I've mentioned many of my trainings and Photoshop sharings before. These are like God's gift. Literally, <laughs> they will create a different color mood to your image. Like for example, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a very good example, a uh, quick example. So I'm going to go down here and choose a color that I think might work. You go Again, This even this color wheel, this, there was a lot of questions back then. How do you mm. get this? Um, I think mo most of the time you have these RGB sliders. Yeah. Uh, for me, I have hard time picking up colors from here. All you have to do is click on the um, menu at the side of your colors and choose color wheel. In this way, you can mix and match colors depending on how you want to use it. For example, I'm going to use this one and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start coloring and uh, enhancing the colors that I already have on top of that. You can see, right? Like for example, oh my God. Again, I love, I enjoy the process of creating, mm. right? Um, like for example, before and after of the light, which I just added, you can see the, the, the detail is already there. Like for example, the light that comes from the top of the owl. Mm. Um, also super important, always enjoy your process. Don't rush, don't rush. Uh, just enjoy and you will learn new things. I think that's the reason why I keep creating every day is because I'm learning new things and that's making me go crazy. It's like, oh my God, it's it's never ending story, <laughs> which yeah. is a good thing. Like for example, if if you have a feeling of like, oh God, that's it. I don't think so. I'm learning something new. Then something is wrong because it's an endless journey. So yeah. Mm. Nice. Adding in more lights, going through. And um, we've got a question from chat. Um, from Steve, the glint in the eyes owl looks fantastic. Do you do anything to that? Uh, like this one? Uh, no, this uh, is it's from the picture itself. Like the photo itself, I didn't do anything. Uh, but it's good that it's there. <laughs> because without it, it looks flat. It's just like black, right? But we will probably enhance the lighting of that as well to give it a bit of flare. So yeah. Nice. So let's zoom out and see. This looks good. The color's looking good. You can see before and after. Let me just show you guys how far we have come within 35 minutes or maybe less than that because we are talking for like 10 minutes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All this step by step, right? So again, super, super important for you to enjoy adding in the shadows. And there's also a question uh, before this in my um, DMs. Uh, how do you know like what size is it? Like, for example, uh, let's, mm. let's say a man is standing beside a lion. Um, always Google and find out. Uh, or you can see how a guy fed the lion. Right. From there, you know, oh, okay, this is the size. Uh, it's also depending on how close you are to the lion. Are you sitting beside the lion? I think, uh, again, I use lion a lot in my photo manipulation. 
uh, is something that I struggled back then, but I use the guidance of the real images uh, mm. to make sure that I I actually create based on the real perspective and yeah. the, the sizes of human. So yeah. Yeah. So this white is bothering me. You have to quickly go in here and clean it that up. Okay. Perfect. Okay, lighting looks good. Um, I am going to bring in uh, slowly. We're gonna do more color adjustment to uh, the owl. Uh, I want to create more of the yellowish color, but we'll do that later. For now, it would be nice to uh, um, have an ankle uh, nearby the ankle here, the the leg. We're gonna add in uh, like uh, accessories. Accessories, I like it. Yes. <laughs> so I have this stock image over here. I'm gonna just get press on W, select subject. Okay, selected. Uh, the color looks good itself. Again, I love the textures and everything. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, resize it. Again, whatever techniques that I'm showing here, uh, it's like the same answer or, uh, or, or the same step that I will use to create my other manipulation that you see on my social media. So I'm going to just resize it even smaller. And, and when you did the select subject there, did you delete the background because it was a flat color or did you mask it out? I mask it out. Like yeah. for example, control Z. So this is selected, right? Yeah. So I go down here and I just select subject. Uh, sorry, mask it. So when I mask it, everything is gone. Cool. And I'm going to resize this. Oh yeah, we're also going to learn how to add in some colouring to it. Like for example, if you're not happy with the red colour stone, you can change to some other stone colour. So I'm going to adjust this. Again, I'm tilting based on where I think it will fit. This. Somewhere here. That should work. Okay, right after adding here. If you notice, um, this is supposed to go around the leg and obviously we need to do more masking so i'm gonna go back here on the masking of the accessories and i'm gonna press l and i'm gonna just imagine that it's wrapping around the leg and it stops here again this is also imagination that just to train how it will look like in real life right mm -hmm. so if i select this again i go back here and if you want to remove this make sure that you're just licking uh you make sure you switch the color to white by pressing X and then press backspace, which is delete. And voila, it's done that, there. Very cool. Hey, I've just got a comment from from uh, from Fariz in chat. Um, <laughs> That's Hi, <Flynn>. my manager. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Hi, Flynn. Could you tell Ramez um, his whole team loves him so much and he's an inspiration to us all. Thank you for being so amazing, Ramez. That is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> He's That's a funny so person, nice. but thank you so much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Very lovely. So we have that. Sometimes it's nice to just have one. Well, we'll we'll see if that that's okay. For example, like I said earlier, right? Uh, so we have this subject. Right? Obviously, we need to uh, do some color correction to this particular ankle itself. So I'm going to create a new layer right on top of the ankle, and let's just call this shadow. Again, we have to use the shadow that's already been done on the uh, uh, for the uh, owl. Um, I'm going to darken it even more. So I'm going to switch to B, which is brush, and then press on D to quickly have a color palette of black and white. I'm going to go in here and slightly make it darker at the side here. And here. Okay, that's good. Again, I'm not so happy with the color of the accessories could be better and you can see there's some detailing on it in order to bring back the colors of the patterns uh, coloring is one also one of my favorite uh, work to do uh, on this layer we're going to call this colors uh, because we're going to color like I said the gods give list here, here it Make is sure again you on yeah. <laughs> colors <laughs> when you pick colors whatever colors that you pick here will reflect on the subject without um, and without like a overlay on it, meaning you can still see the the, the, the texture of it. Like for example, mm. I'm going to zoom in here and you can see how it looks like. Okay, can you see that? The colors are all coming out based on the color that I've selected. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. There you go. There you go. 
Okay, my smoothing, maybe I should reduce it. There you go. That way, uh, you don't have to worry so much. Like for example, oh God, I didn't get the accessories that I want. It's supposed to be in gold color. Don't worry, you can always, always recreate it. Mm. Like for example, I'm going to just color that top part and a bottom part. Now, let's see before and after. Wow, so yeah, it has see, a, like, it looks that gold like a, kind of a, tint to like it. like a silverish color. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice to do this. And then if I, if you want to change the color of the stone, you can too, using the same color uh, layer, I can create something else. Um, I think for this, let's try blue. And then go in here. And you can see without hurting the texture of the subject, I'm just coloring right on top. There you go. I get that color. Nice. But back of my head, I think yellow or orangey might look good. Oh, uh, there's also another tips. Let me show you guys. Yeah, I love this color. And if you, if you are a person who's like, ah, I'm not sure about the color, Ramesh, uh, does that mean I need to keep coloring to fix it? You don't have to. All you have to do is you go to colors, uh, press Control U. You get a color hue and saturation will pop up. All you have to do is slide the hue color. See what happens to the whole colors on the color layer. See that? Yeah, maybe we we'll zoom in a little bit more. So if oh yeah, yeah, sure. Watching on a small on a smaller screen, I can see it here. Okay, let's do that again. Control U, and you can actually just color change it That's great. without coloring it back so yeah i do that a lot as well like for example i like for example i like to use a sari uh, a cloth that we mm. the indian ladies like to use on my uh, subjects if i'm not happy with the sari color what i do is oh i don't have to worry i just use this and change the color i don't have to look for another one so yeah so that's great so like when you're originally painting in that that color you just yeah. do it carefully obviously like as much as you can but it doesn't really matter so much what color you've picked because you can jump into the um hue and saturation slider and just play around with it from there and it'll pick yeah. up the selection yeah yeah an example that's nice oh, cool. to just leave it there um also again bring back the imagination part where you know it's there the the ankle part and you you know the shadow is hitting the leg um right now there's no shadow of the accessories hitting the leg of this owl so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the shadow part here of the owl and i'm going to switch my color to black i'm going to go in here and add the shadow down here and a bit right on top because without it, it will look flat. Now it has some sort of like, a, you know it's real, that it's mm. going around the ankle of the uh, owl. That's okay, very... next, I am going to bring in the scroll. But before that, I need to... Okay, there's another tips. I'm sure a lot of designers have this problem where, Ramesh, every time I click on select subject, everything's selected, everything's removed, that's cool. But then I do still have all these white lines around my subject. Does that mean I need to go into the masking area and switch my brush to black and manually erasing the white line? Well, guess what? You don't have to. <laughs> All you have to do is you go to the owl, the selection area, because everything is selected already. You just go up here uh, under filter, go under other and click on minimum and see what happens. It's gone. Let's see uh that. One more time, oh. before and after. Of course, it will remove the other part of the owl as well, but let's wait and see whether it works. Again, it's also depending on the radius. If your white patches is just too thick around your subject, uh, you can always play with the radius. Uh, you have two different subjects uh, uh, preserved, meaning you want a squareness or you want a roundness, depending on your subject. Like, mm. for example, if I increase, you can see, if I increase the radius even more, it's gone. Right. Basically, it's selecting the radius of your outline of that uh, subject. So for me, uh, just one is enough. Then let's zoom out and see. Yeah, it looks good. Nice. Right? I don't have to worry so much. But of course, we need to bring in the detail. For example, the reason why I say lighting is super, super important is that without it, you see the nail and stuff is blending with the background. So we're going to enhance the color. Mm. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is 
I am going to uh, create new layer. Let's call this a uh, darken. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to bring up the color of the nail. So black is there, which is perfect. I'm going to color pick from the nail itself. Just like that. Okay, how do I color pick? Here is that I press on I. If you press on, uh, you can always go back here um, and select uh, the, the colors that you want. Or what you can do is the color picker here and then select one by one. There's a shortcut for it. You just go in here and press on I. And here you can color pick whatever that you want. So press on I, uh, make sure that you are so close to the dark area of the nail and press on B. And then let's bring back the detail of the nail. There you go. Nice. I'm going to duck in the leaks. I promise that, that you know when we have 10 minutes to go and we have 10 minutes to go. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, I think I have time to add the scroll or should I leave it for next week? Uh, it's up to you, you know what? I'm going to just, I'm just going to place it first just cool. to get the overall picture, right? So I have this scroll over here, which I'm going to use. So this is the scroll and then storytelling that I was saying earlier. So I'm going to, so the thing is, I want to have the scroll plus the chain. But the problem is that if I were to place, again, imagine this, oh, lower down the opacity. Lower down the opacity. Again, bringing this down close to the leg. Maybe make it slightly smaller, just like that. If I were to place it just like this, the chain won't work because, again, it's flying forward. It means the chain has to be backward, like right. it, it, because of the wind, right? The wind's direction. Uh, so I am going to just leave the chain first uh, because I am going to use the puppet warp later on to move the chain on the back so that it looks real. Cool. Yeah. So for now, I am going to duplicate first. I'll keep one copy later. Uh, I'm going to press on W again, select subject. The chain will get selected as well. That's okay. We'll remove it later because I'm going to manually fix that. And because the chain is obviously the owl is holding the scroll. So I'm going to bring this scroll right below the owl. Just like this. Nice. There you go. And the colors are all adjusted accordingly. And I'm going to just bring this here. And if you notice, here's the reason why I said uh, Puppet Warp will help. Because the nail of the owl is one is moving upwards position, which is not right. If you remember how eagles catches rats and everything, mouse and fish and everything, it will make sure that it goes in. And the back of the finger has to go in. So yeah. we will use the Puppet Warp to, to create that later oh very cool so the original image you know the owl's kind of reaching down for something but hasn't hasn't quite grabbed it yet yes and so, yes yeah. yes so that research and observation into your subject is clearly like critically important for something like this yeah because like i said right um earlier when i want to create something it's super super important to just don't create something for the sake of oh i want to call this a photo manipulation i'm done no it's to challenge yourself whether mm -hmm. you're creating an image that looks real and will question everybody that is this real or how do you did it and all that do you use photoshop or 3d software and stuff like that no mm. right uh it's also depending on how uh, much detail you add to it uh towards your photo manipulation so i'm gonna just bring this just there and i'm gonna see we have so much space on top so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna push up a bit so there's like some sort of like a padding around the uh whole uh, manipulation, move it up, move it up, and yeah, that works. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here, and for now, I'm going to remove the chain. I'm gonna just press on L. Let's move this chain away. All this I don't need for now. Here we go. Okay, selected. And I'm just going to back here, make sure this is switched to white and press on backspace. It's gone. Okay, that looks good. But of course, you have to do a color adjustment to the scroll. Um, there are many ways, again, to fix the, the scroll. What I'm going to do is, like how I created the sky, I'm going to just press on color uh, control J to duplicate the scroll and to have the, the dark so that it automatically create the darkened space around it. So I don't have to do a manual fix. So uh, mask, uh, mask it, and then I'm going to just use multiply. 
Um, as you can see here, there's a problem. You can see overall of the manipulation, everything looks subtle, you know, there's some sort of like a fade effects, but because of the texture of the scroll, which is mm. made of like a, like a gold plated thing, it looks so sharp uh, compared to the rest of the photo manipulation. Mm. Uh, you should always fix it by reducing the multiply, just don't make sure it's 100%, reduce it. When you reduce it, and then maybe like 40-50%, see before and after, there's a difference, right? Mm. We will use back the original color uh, from the image below, but uh, right after this. Okay, that looks good. Okay, uh, I'm going to do color adjustment. We have how many more minutes? About <laughs> about three to four minutes left. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm gonna just leave it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can absolutely yeah. leave it here because that's been that's okay. been a lot to cover for today. Yeah, um, let's just and... call this owl. Okay, owl, nice. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing. I mean, there's so many tools in in this session that that you showed, like the, from the tool presets, color lookup. Um, as always, is always you know just such a um, crowd pleaser. Like definitely something that um, should get more familiar with, and something to play mm -hmm. around with if you're not familiar with it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, it's been amazing. Um, and also the halo effects. There's been a lot of a lot of comments. There's some comments in here now about the the color grading. Uh, Amazing process, a lot of tools in here, make it look like magic, uh, looks fantastic. Um, with Ramez, the hour goes very fast. Yes, it does. <laughs> it, gets a lot, it gets a lot in there, um, a lot of details. So thank you for sharing all of, all of that with us. And I'm looking forward to Thursday. Thank you. Um, since we have one more minute, I'm gonna show you guys how it looks like originally without any colors. Yes, great. So that it's flat, so that you guys know how far we have come. Uh, all the darkening area we don't need, brightness gone, this and gone. There you go. This is the original image, guys. Yeah. And what we have created <laughs> is literally from scratch, adding the lights, darkening area, adding color lookup, and everything else, and you get this. Wow. Very cool. And in such a short amount of time as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's really great. Um, so thank you, everybody. We'll leave that up. Um, we'll leave that up while we're, while we're saying goodbyes. Um, thank you, everybody, for your great questions and, and hanging out with us and spending time with us. Hope you're doing well. And Ramez, as always, I just have, I just sit here and don't say anything most of the time because <laughs> I'm just kind of staring at everything thinking, oh, yeah, I need to, I need to remember <laughs> to do that. I need to remember <laughs> that a little bit more. So... Thank you once again um, for hanging out with us and I'm really looking forward to Thursday. Yes, see you guys Thursday. There's so many things that can be done, but yeah, Viking helmet is something that I want to surprise you guys. <laughs> Stay yeah. tuned. See you all on Thursday for the Viking helmet. See you, Rez, and uh, see you all there. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.